Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And the Wallabies have just outclassed the Springboks 30 points to 17. A dreadful, dreadful performance to the former world number ones who, with this defeat, pretty much, um, well, assuming that, it's, I think even if New Zealand go on to, to lose, will actually fall in the world rankings and potentially and slip down to number two for the first time since the World Cup in 2019. A very, very poor performance from the Springboks. A lot of questions that need answering from the coaching staff. Um, and just a game which which just nothing really went right, did it? It was really poor, pretty much from start to end. From missing nine tackles in the first sort of 15 to 20 minutes and conceding two tries to, you know, clawing their way back into the game and holding on to lead for just a few minutes and then just gifting, you know, two tries. The defensive system wasn't good enough, too many knock-ons, too many missed tackles. The Springboks just didn't pitch up today, if we're going to be brutally honest. They did not pitch up. And I think that we can go after the coaching staff a lot if you want to. But I think that's I think that's too easy. I think we've got to look at those players today and think, you need to be accountable. At the end of the day, Jacques Ninobo is not the one missing about 15 tackles throughout that match. You know, Manzadina Stick is not the man knocking the ball on how many times. You know, so it's I think today I do put on the I do put on the players. I do genuinely put on the players. Um, I think that we we tried to keep ball in hand more. We tried to be more positive, which is what everybody wanted us to do, and we couldn't execute very well. So it was it was just poor. It was frustrating. Um, and it's been coming. I, I mean, I don't think it's been coming in, in terms of we've been waiting for a big defeat, but I think that not rotating, playing the same players week in, week out. I don't know if there's a complacency um, issue. I think some players, I think you look at today and you think some players probably shouldn't be starting. Or maybe, and maybe we need to look at it at changing. Maybe we need to look at, at new. I think we've, we've taken such a big squad, squad over to Australia. It's time to give them a go. And now you've lost the opportunity to give them a go against Australia. But you kind of have to back them against New Zealand. You can't reward performances like the last two. You cannot. Um, and today, they, you can't look at, say, like last weekend, you could say just very easily, we outscored them. We didn't uh, take our kicks. We scored more tries. This Today, we, we were outplayed in every facet of the game, every single facet of the game. They counteracted them more brilliantly. The breakdown work was was pretty poor from us, especially towards the last stages of the game. We kicked well for poles, but I think we took we took that option too, too, too often. We didn't look for, to try and score tries. They scored four tries to our one. You know, and the one try we did score was was when we took a quick tap and we actually went for them. And then a nice little tip in behind and we scored through La Canya It was a nice try. We need to do that more. But if we look at the game, so the big moment early on was that was a yellow card to Faf de Klerk in the 12th minute, which I think was pretty harsh in the early stages. There's no doubt that it was very deliberate. I don't think it was cynical in terms of preventing a try scoring opportunity. They were way back in the on, towards the 22 um, and nothing was really on. It was a ruck. So I think it was a bit of a harsh yellow card. Um, to have gone to the card so quickly for such a minor infringement was a big statement uh, from the referee. And Australia obliged. And, and, and a, you know, a minute later, Andre Pollard misslipped a tackle as did Marvin Ori and Iketar went over. Boom. Uh, easy goal there. Um, easy try. And then three or four minutes later, we managed to get a, a penalty inside their half. Um, and um, Andre Pollard converted. He was pretty good with the boot, just missing the one kick today. Um, but then again, you know, not being able to take out kickoffs is becoming a major, major problem. And, and Len Iketar went over for a second in the 20th minute. Once again, Andre Pollard guilty of slipping a tackle. Our defensive line wasn't particularly well set there. This time, Quay Cooper nailing the conversion. We then had a bit of a penalty goal sort of exchange where we kicked one over in the 26th minute. They returned the 29th minute. Once again, not being able to exit is becoming a major problem for the Springboks. Um, Pollard then added the extras in the 31st minute. Lachlan Swinton then got away with, um, well, potential red card. Um, let me know if you thought it was a red card down in the comments below. And not a particularly good tackle against Dwayne Fumuren. We saw it last week against Evan Etzebert, this time getting punished for it. Um, Fumuren had to go off for an HIA um, as a result. Um, um, so Swinton got a yellow card in the 32nd minute. We got a penalty towards the end of the first half. And I think that was the moment where we had to go for the line. We went for the points to try and reduce the gap. But with the man down, with a bit of momentum, I would have liked to have seen us be more confident, you know, go for the line. I'll try and get a more try. Try bring that back line in. Um, you score a try, you go into halftime with a lead. And I think that that's always quite important in terms of a momentum switch. We came on um, after halftime, we came on firing, didn't we? We scored in the 41st minute through Le Canyon Am. Winning a penalty, Faf de Klerk take it quickly, going to the line. We went to the left, we went back to the right. Faf de Klerk spotted a bit of space in behind, went down to the grabber and Le Canyon Am went over. Very nice try. Um, 10 minutes later though, Offside at the at, at the rack time after a very nice kick from Nick White um, put Australia into a good attacking position. Penalty goal there for Quade Cooper. And after that, you know, 
it was just really poor defensive. I mean, Corey Betty scored a quick fire brace, 61, 67 minutes. First try, or both tries coming down the the the, the blind side, and just there's no defense really. You know, they they they, they saw the space, they used the space, draw a man and pass. It was very, very effective. Um Craig Cooper nailing both those conversions. And Jasper Visa just to absolve the wounds, getting a yellow card in the 78th minute. If we look at the stats from the game, ironically, um, possession-wise, South Africa dominated, 61% possession, which we don't always do, um, and 39% for Australia. But just the four tries to the one. Australia beat 16 defenders today, which shows you that the defense today was really, really poor. Um, we beat just five defenders. Four clean breaks to two. Um, we made more passes, so we were passing the ball around more. We had more offloads. Um, but we can see that 17 turnovers. You cannot concede 17 turnovers. Um, all these stats are courtesy of uh, Rugby Pass, by the way. So if you want to check them out, that's where these stats are. You cannot miss 21 tackles in a test match. And this is why I'm saying do, I, I wouldn't go after the coaching staff. When you miss 21 tackles, those are players make, missing 21 tackles. Um, compared to nine from Australia, which also is not phenomenal. But they won five turnovers. We won three. Um, you know, at the breakdown... They were Australia won forty, we won seventy one. We lost four. They didn't lose a single ruck, you know. So it's 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 those sort of things that that we're just, we're just off everywhere, really. Um, scrums are pretty solid. We were winning scrum penalties, um, but discipline penalties and see eleven to seventeen. So it wasn't even like we were conceding that many penalties. We just first of all didn't know how to convert our opportunities to points, and second of all, our defense just was 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 nowhere today. Um, some players who I did think think played pretty well and tried pretty well was. Um, you know, the starting front row had a reasonable ascendancy in terms of the scrums. Um, I thought Sia Khaleesi tried really hard in, in a losing effort. He was very disappointed with how he played last week, and I thought he had a very, very good game. Um, I also thought um, Spoon Corsi was very good. He chased down all the kicks. He was putting a lot of pressure under the high ball. The aerial game was working. As I said, you just too many knock-ons, too many um, mistakes on defense, and that's where we were sort of outdone. Um, on attack, you know, not too much to speak of. Andre Pollard made 35 meters, the most of any back um, across his seven carries. Um, defensively, you know, we're looking at missed tackles here. Franco Moss is making 10 tackles, which is the most, but missing four, which is uncharacteristic of him. I thought he had a pretty poor game. Even Etzebet was pretty quiet, um, also missed two tackles. Sia Clisi made the second most tackles with eight, missing just the one. Um, in the back line, Nakanya Am made six tackles, didn't miss a single one. Billy LaRue missed three tackles and didn't make one. So you've got to wonder if his place is now up for grass. Boone Corsi making six tackles, missing two. Um, in terms of discipline, penalties can see Frank Kamosi can see two penalties. Uh, Pafta Clerk can see two penalties and a uh, yellow card. Andre Pollard um, can see two penalties, as did Evan Etzebeth. So you talk about discipline, it wasn't great. It, it really wasn't great. Um, it's about apparently had two lineup steals, but the lineups were actually working. Marvin Ori actually did a pretty good job at lineup time, but he's a pretty it's just nothing special, really, is he, in terms of his, his overall sort of play. Uh, back to the drawing board for the spring box. Not a good game. We will have to see what changes the coaching staff will make. Let me know what you think um, will happen next weekend down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll chat to you soon.